Hum, acho que já estamos aparecendo, hein? Vamos lá. Let me see if you are appearing here in our live. One minute, Pandem. Está aparecendo? So, uh, Dr. Pandem, thank you very much for you coming here in my channel, Paleobot Videos, Paleobot and Italian Knowledge for Everybody. It's a pleasure to receive you here, okay? Uh, good morning in Brazil and good afternoon in India now. Yeah, <laughs> I thank think, you so much. Yes, yes. And uh, in uh, other parts of the world, it's also good morning, good afternoon, <laughs> maybe good evening in, in other countries, okay? Yeah. And uh, Dr. Pandey, I will introduce you here, okay? Dr. Pandey is scientist B in Birbal Sun Institute of Paleobotany in India, in Lucknow. Uh, he has master's degree and PhD uh, of the Department of Geology uh, in Lucknow University. And uh, nowadays, uh, his research investigates the emergence of microscopic multicellular complex eukaryotic life of the Criogenian, Ediacaran, and the Cambrian period. Okay? And uh, as I told you before, uh, he is affiliated to the Department of Paleobotany in Bibelson Institute of Paleoscience. So, Dr. Pandey, you can um, talk more about uh, your experience, okay? About uh, your curriculum, about your papers, okay? And after you can start your presentation. Uh, I think you have to wait some minutes, uh, five minutes, something like this, um, to people okay. enter okay. here in this presentation. So you can talk more about you, about your experience. Fine, 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 fine. fine, fine. First of all, First of uh, all uh, thank you so thank much you so for much. inviting me for this uh, wonderful lecture online for Brazil. This is my first time lecture to Brazil, and I'm quite happy to demonstrate some of my work which I'm trying to do, and will try to make you people understand what is happening in a, a very interesting uh, period of Idiakaran which is known for the emergence of first animal and algae. So thank you, Sarah. Um, I met Sarah way back in, uh, in, uh, in our institution when she visited uh, as a scholar there in uh, BSIP, Lucknow. And uh, now she is doing really good. And it's been a long time. And uh, about me, if, uh, if I tell you that I'm the Precambrian paleobiologist. So I definitely concentrate on the paleobiological aspects of Precambrian, especially in Cryogenian and Ediacaran. Cryogenian and Ediacaran is the latest uh, period for the Precambrian and thereafter the Precambrian ends and the Cambrian starts. So to know the transitional phase, how the evolutionary history played an important role, you know, how the life has switched from uh, Precambrian to Cambrian, knowingly and unknowingly, it is quite important to know that what are the major changes which have been occurred during this period. So that's why I, I try to explore uh, some of the key questions of the Cambrian period also. Cambrian is basically, if I tell you, 
for, for a layman language that uh, is the period of trilobite, of the period of first autopods, of the period when or the Darwin actually looked at up to the Cambrian, but not beyond that. So that period is very important. So that's all. Uh, I'm trying to uh, walk uh, many of the basins, some of the basins in India, which is quite promising. Uh, since last, I think, 14 years, I'm working with the two important basins of India and trying to explore another basin in, uh, in Great Himalaya, uh, which is quite high in the, in the in uh, altitude, I'm planning to uh, take a new project for Chithi Himalaya, which is around, uh, uh, you know, 15,000 feet or 16,000 feet high um, altitude, and trying to get some answer, if any, any, any kind of sedimentation or the fossil record is there in this Chithi Himalaya or not. So that's all for India and uh, uh, a part of it uh, I have worked or I'm working with some of the part of the South Chain uh, succession, including Lantian formation. I'm working uh, on, on some very old or the oldest metaphytes or the algae. A Lantian biota is basically a garden of the algae. So I'm working since last two, three years also to know the answer how these sort of macroscopic uh, complex eukaryote algae evolved and how it works further in the future uh, in, uh, you know, with regards to the evolution of life. So that's all about me. Yes. Uh, let me tell one thing here, because some people uh, are botanists here in Brazil, and when the people with botanists sometimes don't think about the past. So, Dr. Pande, uh, will you talk about eukaryotic life, uh, macroalgae, these things, uh, from uh, more than five five hundred forty five years old before it. so very very old time okay yeah it is so, uh, okay so dr pande let us go to start your your presentation now okay 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 sure you can share your screen yeah, I think I already shared the screen and now you can share. Here is my presentation. Let me okay. Click it to share all the okay, okay. Now I will leave, okay? And after I will return here, Dr. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Me... So I think uh, I'm audible to everyone. Can anyone, can everyone listen to me? Sarah, can you listen to me? Anyways, I'll, I'll start with uh, my presentation. So today's talk is the uh, Idiacaran benthic algae or seaweed. So Idiacaran is the period which is basically in the geological time scale 
is the youngest part of the geological time scale of Precambrian. Precambrian itself covers around 88% of the Earth's history, and the Ediacaran is the youngest, most period of the Precambrian. If uh, regarding the numbers of the Ediacaran age, if I talk about it, it starts from 635 million years and ends up to 541 million years. So this time period is very important in the Earth's history. With regards to the complex life, the eukaryotic life, which came into existence on the Earth, and this actually turns everything regarding evolution of life in further Cambrian period. So definitely the idea garden biota is uh, is known as the first animals but there were a very very big debate because the idea garden biota is actually the animals or not but thereafter in 2019 it is also resolved that yes they act they are actually the first animals on the earth which evolved at the time of area current period. Okay, so if they were the animals and they were big, they were big like two meters tall, one meter tall, then on what they must have fed upon? I mean to say what will be or would have been the food source for those Ediacaran animals. I think for a long body plan or the big body plan, you need more food to take. You know, you need more oxygen to dissolve it. So what are the sources? And that is how this topic I have chosen, the idea current benthic algae seaweed, a feasible source for sustenance of large body plant of first animals. So let's talk about uh, something about uh, paleolatitudinal condition or situation of uh, the idea current period. As I mentioned, it, it covers around 635 up to 541 million years of Earth's history. If we talk about uh, some of the continent, such as the Greater India, Australia, South China, North China, Siberia. So those continents are near the equator. Just look at those continents which are close to the equator or on the equator. So at, the, at around 600 billion years, when the first animal came in the existence on the earth, the time these continent was around the tropical scenario. The second thing which need to understand or make the mind very stiff regarding their, their biotic content of the area current biota. In the left side, yellow band, which is showing here, is covering 635 million years up to 541 million years time period. And the right side, you, you, you can see most of the fossils. And these fossils are either microscopic or the microscopic. So some of you can see by your eyes and some of you see from your, under the microscope. But if 
I talk about, just look at the left bar, yellow bar, 580 million years. So below 580 million years, you have some of the fossils like a Dashanto animal embryo, which have been discovered in 1998. And some of the acanthomorphic ecotox, which are basically a very unique ecotox or the eukaryotes. And another thing is the Lantian biota. So Lantian biota is basically uh, algae, which came in, in existence around 600 billion years old rock strata. But look at two uh, black lines, thick lines, the lower one at around 635, which shows the Marinoan snowball earth glaciation. This glaciation is very important because it lasts around uh, about uh, 20 million years and the earth was fully covered with the ice. So if the earth was fully covered with the ice and uh, at the equator also it covered, which actually the snowball earth theory says, then I think uh, by the severe cold, the life below the ocean or the life above the ocean would have been died because of extreme cold, but it was not the case. The life was surviving at the time of the snowball earth also, just below the uh, ice layer in the tropical region. And that has also been recorded in some of the tillite, uh, some of the tillite or glacial till, there was a life which was surviving and even thriving at the time. So this was the major glaciation and thereafter these, uh, uh, you know, microscopic and macroscopic uh, life has come to evolve. Look at the second black uh, line, which is the another uh, glaciation, which was, which lie around one million years, uh, around 582 million years back. So this glaciation was also very important because thereafter, actually the life got big. What the meaning of my word is the life after this glaciation was very big, in fact, around two meters tall. If I talk about some rangiomorphs and anetomorphs recorded from Avalon Biota in Canada, in Mistaken Point, Newfoundland, then the biota was very big in size, they were fractal in nature. They were attached to the substratum in the ocean floor. And they were surviving on the nutrients available in the ocean column by the osmotrophy. So they have unique morphology. They have unique, uh, uh, you know, uh, adaptation of taking nutrients from the water column. So this is the way in the Avalon life has been evolved. But apart from Avalon or the Canada, the major, uh, if I tell you the major or the important significant areas where, where the life has been evolved is the Namibia. Namibia is also the place where the Idiakaran life was existed. And most of the fossil in the Namibia was different than the fossil found in the Avalon biota. 
a Namibia fossil was preserved in three dimension in silicic plastics, whereas the Avalon biota was preserved in the deep sea environment and in the carbonate or the limestone or the ash bed. And the third biota is also from the Siberia. Siberia is from Russia, I must say Russia. So this biota is also very different. This biota also was very different. And uh, it was also uh, preserved on the carbonate or on the limestone succession. So this is all about the biota of the Idiagaran age. So this is the another bar where you can see the Idiagaran biota which have been you know evolved through ages. But this this uh, graph I, I I would more concentrate on the right side of uh, right side of the part where you can see this conical evolutionary dynamics and you see the further right side the v shape blue part where the evolutionary dynamics can see the stem group and the crown group so the the biota uh, which was there in the idea garden period uh, was belonging to the stem group and the crown group which are, which is the start of uh, any phylogeny of any any animal and the plant so so i must say that yes the first animal actually involved evolved in in the idea current period and the first algae also came in existence which was which was uh, also uh, quite um, complex and eukaryotic in the idea garden period. Uh, let's talk first uh, 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 one slide for, for, for one fossil which is known as Dickinsonia. So the Dickinsonia is basically a typical idea current fossil. You can see this image of uh, uh, the Dickinsonia which is preserved on the on the bedding surface as a compression fossil. And this fossil is, as I uh, earlier said, that uh, the Idiagara biota uh, was uh, in debate whether they have the first animal, they are the first animal or not. So now this paper in 2018, published in science actually uh, proven that yes, this fossil or the Idiagaran biota represents the first uh, animals based on presence of cholesterol as a hallmark of the animal. Let's come to the uh, some of the algae part which are also Iriakaran in age. Yeah, the Lantian and uh, <clears throat> Lantian algae is from China and the Marwar algae is from India. Both the algae open the new window to understand the origin and early evolution of multicellular metaphytes and metazoans such as the algae and the animals. So algae, plant, fungi, etc. have their tendency to preserve in a fine grain sediments. In Phrenozoic, you must have seen a very good preservation, but yes, uh, in Precam, it's, it's, uh, it's quite uh, it's quite rare and yes, nowadays the people are working on those sediments and we are getting very, very complex algae in Precambian also. So, but the preservation of such life forms in the siliciclastic sediment is different. 
and in shale and in limestone it is different so mode of preservation mode of preservation may be different but uh, yes there was algae however recent uh, uh, you know uh, megascopic algae reported from india current member uh, you know south australia which is preserved in sandstone attaining a length of 30 centimeter uh, in 2013 and uh, recently in 2020, but still the affinity is unknown or close to, or I, we must say that it's close to algae only. I don't know because it's uh, marine sequences. So in marine sequences, I, I must guess this, uh, that uh, the green, brown and, and, and the red algae must have been there at the time. So let's uh, take uh, two examples, uh, one from uh, India and uh, look at the uh, uh, geological map of the Marwar supergroup uh, left side uh, in India. And the second, the right side is showing the geological map of the Lantian area or the Lantian formation. And Accordingly, they have, both have their lethal log. And here it is in zoom. You can see the Marwars are divided into three major parts. Uh, look at the left side, Jodhpur group, Pulara group, and the Nagar group. Three groups are there. And Jodhpur and the Nagar group are basically uh, uh, classic sediments and the Belara represents the carbonate. Whereas in South China, the Lantian biota or the Lantian formation, which is also the Idiagaran in age, is representing by the limestone, black shape and dolo stone. The Lantian formation is, uh, is basically is basically uh, divided into uh, four parts. Uh, four parts, one, two, three, and four. So if we talk about the yellow part, if we talk about here, the fossilization or the, or the Lantian seaweed, you can find here, fine. So the arrowhead is showing the fossil locality. The arrowhead showing is the fossil locality. So there are two papers uh, which published in 2017 and recently in 2020. In both the paper, I have contributed a lot and to understand how the algae plays an important role in the idea garden ocean and that to be having a, a very great size and shape so the first paper from the india and the second paper is from the lantian formation of china let's talk about the indian part so if we talk about the indian part so I will be talking about the Marwar supergroup first. So the Marwar supergroup uh, in which the algae you can see in this, in this, in this presentation are quite unique. These are the quartz arenite, the sandstone body. On the bedding plane of the sandstone, you have those structures which are very unique, three-dimensionally preserved. In this F, it is also covered by a microbial mat, thin greener of the microbial mat. They sometimes crisscross to each other. They sometimes bicotinomous in nature. They sometimes penetrate the sediment inside. They sometimes twist to each other, 
they have sometimes the loops like that. Many, many unique features are there to understand. And, and they, are, they are basically a metric size, meter size. See the twisting, see the unique overlapping with each other. Those are kind of, you know, features which actually, uh, you know, hurt my mind that what these features are. As a geologist, uh, first I understand whether these features are biogenic, first of all, or abiogenic. Being a geologist, I need to, uh, I need to discard it that it is made up of some of the inorganic feature or the sedimentary structure. So I, I try to rule out each and every sedimentary structures in my paper by studying most of the things in this, in this particular algae or the structure or the three-dimensional structure. So I try to rule out uh, some of the, you know, abiogenic features in my paper. So for that, actually I cut one of the specimen from two sides. So now you can see the polish section here, the polish section of this particular tube-like feature. So this tube-like feature has been cut, polished, and look at the color. Here, the color is dark. Here, the color is dark. Now, I made a thin section from this part. I made a thin section from this part and go through the low power microscopy. So the low power microscopy shows this part is dark just because of these linings, what these linings are. If we further zoom it, then we can see some thread-like features which are quite unique in the nature. They are, they are binding to each other they are binding to one another, they are twisting to one another and making a bundle-like things like this. You know, just, just see the twisting. So what these are? These were actually the filamentous algae. Filamentous algae was preserved in the sandstone. It's quite unique. No. Actually, it is, it is, it is only the impression of impression of uh, carbonaceous filamentous algae, which was there, which was there in the sandstone earlier, but thereafter it get oxidized, but their structure left on the sediment. And that's what I can see here. So what actually, if suppose this algae has a thallus, a tube-like feature, and any algae lay down on the sediment, then what will happen? The algae engulf the thallus of the, of the thallus of the algae which lay down. Fine. So this kind of this kind of layer, if suppose this is the thallus of the algae, so this is the layer which is engulfed by this, this filamentous algae. And lower part of the thallus is also is engulfed by this algae. So in cross section, the tubes looks like this, darker in color. Here you can see in zoom, the darker in color. Why so dark? And 
the surroundings are more coarser. The more coarser sediment shows that this particular part where the dark sediments are there are finer basically. Why do, those were finer? Finer because of, because of the suspended particle within the water column which actually penetrate the thallus of the algae while degrading and preserve and attain the shape of the thallus. And that is why this differentiation of the sediment actually came in existence. And to show, uh, to show this and to prove this, that yes, this is basically an organic feature and which is, which is close to uh, seaweed or the algae. So if these were uh, meters long, then they must have needed also the whole fast or where they actually evolved. So you can see this whole fast like features, they are very big, it's around 10 to 15 centimeter whole fast like this. This, these are some of the whole fast of these algae, which were three dimensionally preserved at the time. We also gone through the uh, uh, petrological investigations of the algae part and the part of the source rock. So if I must say, in the thallus or the tube of the algae, if I already shown that the sediments would be very finer. So this B, this success, this photograph is within the thallus. This is very fine sand. This is the source rock or the sandstone on which this algae actually preserve. So this is this is medium grain sandstone. And if where we cut you know and see the both the difference all together so you can see the all together difference this is the part of uh, the algae in which the sediment actually for inside are very very fine and uh, then the portion in the in the source rock was very coarser so what we will be infer uh, we infer that uh, we we are sitting uh, in the sandstone, uh, which is which is tidal flat as environment. And if I talk about uh, the most of the seaweeds in the ocean floor nowadays existed in the shore face or the subtidal region, uh, where actually they evolve and get uh, uh, you know benefited. So, so, so the subtidal region was very specific region because uh, the wave action actually occurred at the time of the subtidal region because uh, we have a pair with the wave base and the storm wave base uh, areas where the seaweeds were actually uh, you know, evolved. So if we talk about the low tide scenario, where the tide was low and the energy was low in the ocean floor, then and the sea word, sea, seaweed were, were, were there at the time of you know, the low tide here at the uh, shore face, then by the wave action or, or the high tide, when the high tide occurs, by the wave action, what will happen? So by, the, by the wave action actually, uh, actually uh, the seaweed broken from the substratum and it get transported towards the intertidal region. So you can see these are broken and going towards the intertidal subsession or the foreshore region. In foreshore region, there was a high and lows areas, the bar and interbar sequences so those bar and interbar sequences are very good enough uh, uh, 
for for the preservation of the microbial mat or the algae very fine tiny algae okay so and actually they they get transported and they get preserved in a in a in a trough region or the depression region where that algae already was there and with time after you know sea level changes with time after a, a low water level this depression has a water has a algae and they slowly slowly get degraded but yes there was a water available and the algae also available already in a in a green, green color you can say here so algae the already available algae actually engulf this particular tube and uh, get trapped so that's what the scenario what i can get in the marvars let's come to the lantian biota these are some of the a very unique algae which looks like a very similar to one another they have fan shaped so basically three types of uh, algae i must say i'll show here one is very fan shaped and one is slender and one in between so these are some of the algae but the unique thing for this algae is that these algae are preserved on the shale as a carbonaceous compression so everything which you can see here is the carbon before that no carbon was there in indian part this graph shows the gnd band which shows these are the organic carbon and uh, the right left side is basically a reconstruction for the ocean floor how how the lantian uh, you know biota looks like in the ocean floor this is the recent paper which we have published and reconstruct uh, so we have algae on uh, on sandstone which i which i showed you in the india again this was from the shale but this one is from the limestone the last two last two if i leave which is from australia but these all are from these all are a to h is from the limestone so in limestone it is also three dimensional in, in structure in sandstone in australia it is three dimensional in structure so how this algae is important let's have a, some questions and to know some some of the answers which we need to know and we need to discuss so if the idea gana biota is a and so the idea gana biota if i talk about it means the animals uh, i have not talked about much about here the animals but animals were basically a Two meters tall and very big in size, which is uh, known since long. But yes, on what they must have fed upon, or what they actually feed for their survival or for their big body plan. So, if I talk about the Gaspier glaciation, which occurred around five eighty million years, and thereafter. the idea karan biota about 2 meters tall came so this is the first phase of life 571 to 551 million years when the life was like this and the another phase if we talk about the lantian biota and the sonia seaweed india 
So these are the algae which were very long, which were very big, along with, along with, with but but the ages are different. And thereafter, the Idiacara biota, uh, Idiacara member from Australia, again a meter scale algae, and again a meter scale algae from Russia, from this age. So what these algae are actually indicating us and what are the relationship uh, along with the first animal with algae. Uh, let's uh, look at this, uh, this particular blue part, if I talk about. Uh, these are showing some of the biomarker studies. These are the ages. So 635, uh, this is around 700 million years to 635, it is cryogenic in age before the idea current. So before the idea current, uh, you know, the first uh, uh, lipid biomarker studies actually established. And thereafter in idea current also, the lipid biomarker studies is also very important. Uh, as I earlier shows that it has been now proved that the first animal, actually the first animal in the idea current time period. So if we talk about uh, this, uh, this graph, which is published in Nature in 2018, so it shows a different colors. If I uh, just easy out of these colors, so the, the red color is cholestein, uh, blue color is the ergostein, and stigma stain is the green. So stigma stain is the green algae, basically. Okay, so and uh, the cholestein is the red algae. As we have a molecular clock data set that uh, we have a red algae in the past record of, uh, it's around 1.2 billion years old rock strata, we have a red algae, which is already recorded, already recorded in the fossil record, which is microscopic in age, in size, but yes, uh, uh, the green algae has never came in existence. So this data shows that, uh, uh, yes, this is, this is the snowball earth. And thereafter, what happened? The rise of algae, the algae bloom, bloom of the algae has come. Yani, it means that the algae started, you know, booming. Why these algae started booming? because of deglaciation or the Rodinia breakup at around 800 million years back, the ocean floor weathered, sea floor spreading occurred, several you know, minerals by the weathering and erosion, uh, you know, micronutrients or the nutrients in the form of vanadium, nickel, cobalt, zinc, as came in the water column, they actually make a micronutrient environment for the life to exist. And they use those elements and they, those elements are top sensitive elements also, by which we can understand how, how, how the oxygen was playing along with this uh, micronutrients and this particular algae evolution together. So you can see this 635, the green or, or the green algae was there in vast amount. And this is the end of the Idiacaran. So Idiacaran was very flourished with the algae and different types of algae. And now we are finding the more robust data of the fossil record from India, from Australia, but th this is the biomarker studies. This is the only biomarker studies which shows this. But now we have a, a very big, uh, you know, uh, size of the algae uh, recorded from India current succession from India, uh, from Russia, from Australia, from uh, from China, and uh, I know I, I know some of the part of in Brazil also. Uh, some of the algae are very big in size and, and carbonaceous in nature.
So if we talk about uh, uh, you know uh, some of the elemental data set along with the oxygen level uh, within the area current period, so nutrients increased between 571 millimeters. But before that, I would say rather um, after the Stuartian glaciation, probably cyanobacteria or the bloom were main cause for the source of dissolved uh, organic carbon in the ocean column. With the appearance of such high seaweed or the replace of DOC also turns high. So DOC means is dissolved oxygen uh, organic carbon. So from where this uh, dissolved organic carbon has come? In a two way, if I tell you, dissolved organic carbon has come in two, two parts, from, from, uh, one from the cyanobacterial bloom and the second from the lantean and the, uh, you know, the sonia seaweed, when they get dyed, then thereafter uh, they, 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 get it, they get decayed and they form the, uh, you know, the part of the dissolved ox, uh, organic carbon in the ocean flow. And further, the ocean column in ocean, the ocean oxygen actually er erodes. But, uh, but what was the unique part uh, of the idiocarbon biota? Uh, if I talk about the idiocarbon biota from 580 to 595, uh, uh, 50 million years, they have a specific uh, morphology of their organization or the people have worked on, 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 the, on the morphology of uh, uh, the area current biota or the surface area, area by volume ratio actually they have worked upon. So they have a very unique uh, body structure via which uh, and the you uh, via which uh, they actually take nutrition from the water column and uh, uh, and uh, take the nutrition from the water column but at around 550 million years look at this uh, left hand scale uh, this is uh, this is showing here. Five fifth five forty is the peak Cambrian, Cambrian, and here it is six thirty five. So it is idiocarbon. Fine. So idiocarbon biota, Avalon biota, White Sea, Nama. Fine. Three biotas are there, and these are blue, green. Orange and blue again is the molybdenum, vanadium, uranium, molybdenum, and this is the relative oxygen level. So these are the biota. Biota 580, 570 to 560. This is the Avalon biota. The oxygen level was high. The redox sensitive elements were very high you know you can see this line nama has a great assemblage and in nama also the oxygen level was very high it uh, some of the studies says that uh, the oxygen level was around uh, as nowadays now uh, at around 20 percent at the time of the idea current and look at these uh, vanadium lichen uranium uh, molybdenum ratio is also increasing it means that the nutrient was available at that time and the oxygen was very high at the time for flourishment of the biota and again uh, uh, the nama assemblage the white sea assemblage it was uh, in between and uh, the last one is uh, is uh, 560 to 540 million years or 545 million years that is the Nama assemblage. Uh, it also increasing. Uh, uh, it, it also shows that yes, uh, there was an increase in relative oxygen level, and yes, uh, uh, accordingly, accordingly, the molybdenum, uranium, vanadium, and molybdenum ratio is also increasing. So.
the micronutrients uh, play an important role uh, along with the oxygen level in the ocean column uh, for the flourishment of the area garden biota. So uh, I must say the oxygen suddenly dropped in the terminal area garden period. So who has affected? Uh, if I talk about the 540 here, if I talk about 540 here, the oxygen level was very low. Why it is so? 550 to 540. So oxygen suddenly dropped in terminal area current period. So who has affected oxygen level and nutrients? The animal. And if the animal, then who triggered the growth of the animal? Because we have the animals, they actually extincted at the time and they have a very modular morphology via which they, they, they actually maintain the biological oxygen demand by their morphology. But now we have a different animals at the time and uh, they have a different organization. They are calcareous in nature. So the biotech innovation such as the biomineralization switched ocean water slight neutral to acidic from where the phosphorus released from the bottom of the ocean and algal bloom or the eutrophication must have created relative anoxia in the terminal area current period. So when you when you when you increase the demand of the food, when you increase the demand of the oxygen, it ultimately lacked the food and create the anoxia. And that's what the situation in the latest area current period when the new biota has came in existence and the anoxia creates. In a chain process, if I would say the algal or the seaweed community might have played a pivotal role to provide a enough dissolve of organic carbon and nutrient, but at the same time nutrient and oceanic oxygen has positive correlation with the animals after gas gear glaciation around 580 million years up to 550 million years back. Uh, this is the new discovery, which actually the month or the couple of months before it came in existence. The first chlorophytes or the green algae. I already shows that uh, yes, uh, there are the biomarker studies which shows that yes, uh, there was uh, there was a uh, you know, uh, there was a, a green algae at the time, uh, at the time of the area current period, and actually it evolved. Uh, it 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 actually helps helps the metazoan to uh, to to survive. But the new record shows these tiny fossils. Carbonaceous preservation of these tiny fossils from North China. This shows the first and the oldest multicellular chlorophyte. So we thought that uh, it came in existence in Nidia Karan, but no, it was there in around one billion years old rock strata. But those were very microscopic or millimetric in size, uh, maybe centimeter, maximum centimeter in size, not meter scale as in Idiakar. So it's quite obvious that before getting meters scale, you must have juvenile stage for any algal part or the evolutionary aspects if I talk about. And in the older part, you should have a very, you know, tiny little part of any, 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 any living strata. So by the existing uh, hypothesis about feeding pattern of the big Idiagarn biota, which was available, nutrient dependent growth is available, rise of cyanobacteria and uh, algae triggers metazoan growth is available. These are some of the hypotheses which are already available. But above mentioned hypotheses are somehow uh, interconnected with abundance of algal growth and later on innovation and adaptation in the idea currents ecosystem. And the Lantian, Sonia, Australia, and uh, you know, uh, Russian uh, seaweed and algal 
India current community should be suitable target for prompt study to answer about first emergence of animal life and their diversity. That's uh, uh, it's just a glimpse of uh, some of the India current fossils which are preserved in the sandstone. Left side is the reconstruction of the India current ocean floor. These are some of more fossils on sandstone. How the idea garden fronts like uh, fossil uh, or the abalon biota looks like. Uh, the left side, you can see the around 1.8 meter tall man is standing just besides with the idea garden biota. It's around about two meter tall at the time. So I would uh, definitely acknowledge some of the uh, institution my institutions, uh, my my group, my Precambrian group, which is the only group uh, who is working in India on Precambrian paleobiology in different part. Uh, we are working in uh, in, in, in Archean and uh, up to the Cambrian part of the Indian succession. And uh, uh, we have quite good uh, analytical facility, uh, analytical facility of photography and uh, some geochemical analysis. Uh, I would definitely uh, acknowledge uh, uh, Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology where I've been there and for six months I had a very rigorous field work there around uh, uh, one and a half month with Professor Shuha, Izunla Yuan, Ben Ban, Kepan and uh, other students there. They actually helped me a lot for an investigation of the lunch and biota. Uh, yes, at the last, I would uh, request, uh, I would uh, acknowledge the Professor Shuha Zia from Virginia and Ching Tang for, for their encouragement and support with this study. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, Pandi. Um, Hi. Are you here, Sami? <laughs> uh, one minute. Yes. Here is that. Lisa, amazing lecture. Really, I learned many things. Okay. Uh, very good presentation, Pandi. Congratulations. And uh, I have some questions here. Yep. I have Thank some you. questions here. I think. People have some questions also. Francisco here has some questions also. First of all, one, one curiosity. Uh, these fossils uh, that you found with Dr. Kuman, uh, where, where uh, do you put, do you keep these fossils in this study? Francisco, dá meu papel, que eu acho que minhas perguntas estão. No, I didn't get you. Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yes. Where did you keep uh, these fossils uh, okay. that you found with yeah. Dr. Mukundi? I don't, yeah. I don't remember the name that the research yeah, yeah. that you were review. Yeah, uh, on the field it is it is quite big. It's not so easy to excavate to excavate and take those big part of meter scale, and they are very heavy uh, to the lab. But yes, uh, we have a kind of some blocks uh, which are staying in our in our lab and in our museum. It uh, it is available to see. Anyone can come and have a look. And on the field, it okay. was everywhere. Okay, but uh, in Birbalsani or in another institutions? In Birbalsani, in your lab? In Birba, yeah, in Birbalsani Institute of Paleo Sciences. In my lab, in my lab, pre and Paleobiology lab at BSIP, as well as in the BSIP Museum, both of the places you can find those fossils. Okay, okay, very good. 
uh, another question uh, is uh, I don't know if my English is very good if I understand you very well but uh, I am I, I didn't understand it because the oxygen dropped uh, between Ediacaran and Cambrian you explain it but I didn't understand uh, Oxygen dropped because the animals appeared. It is it. No, uh, animal animal was appeared at around 518 million years ago. Yes, but they were quite <laughs> capable enough to take uh, nutrition from the ocean column, to take uh, oxygen from the water column, to survive. They have a kind of organization or or a kind of uh, you know uh, uh, morphology via which they actually survive they maintain the oxygen level they maintain the nutrient level in the ocean column but when they die but when they die around 580 million years ago uh, uh, 550 million years ago then the ocean chemistry has been changed the new biota or the new animals came in existence. They have not those capability or the adaptability to maintain the oxygen level, nutrient level, both in the ocean column. They create the oxygen demand. They create the uh, you know uh, nutrient demand, and that's why the anoxia has been created at the time just before the Cambrian. Just because of new new element of the animal has came in existence, and they do okay. not have those capabilities uh, those have before. Okay, one more thing. In Cambrian, I think in the middle of Cambrian, the oxygen dropped again. Uh, yeah. So, what happened in this period in Cambrian? Well, uh, Again in Cambrian, again in Cambrian, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, if if you have uh, more and more biota or more and more life, animal life, you know, in Cambrian, uh, the suddenly the life has came in existence. Are basically, if I would say, this is my intuition. Maybe I'm wrong. That nowadays, if 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 the community or the you know ecosystem how big the ecosystem is and in cambrian at that time what i feel the ecosystem was even bigger than nowadays so the very vast life was there and definitely if we have a, a, a limited supply of nutrients and oxygen then ultimately the demand would be high and that's how the nutrient that's how the survival of the fittest theory will fit who can survive who can fight for the you know uh, who can fight for the food who can uh, fight for for their shelter only those can survive who can you know also create the anoxia so so it's a kind of predation uh, you know prey and predation kind of thing so it's a kind of uh, a darwinism theory uh, the fittest theory will apply on the cambrian part so that's how that's how it works so we have a more biota more life but limited source of uh, uh, you know oxygen and the food so we have to maintain both of the things together and that's how the oxygen level dropped down and the, uh, you know uh, nutrients also came down okay so we have here one more question francisco wants you to to do a question uh, okay. where is the question no it's not here Give me the paper, Francisco, or you say, no, no problem. 
One minute, Pani. Uh, let me read it here. How think how think this algae concentration can be relatively to the host rock? Any idea about the level of metals this algae can concentrate? Gas metals should be important in big body plant feeding. Yeah, the actually, plant... I, I, I would read uh, actually. Uh, how thick these uh, algae concentration could be related to the host rock. Uh, what I can understand from this word, uh, from this sentence, uh, is uh, that the how how thick the thallus of the algae was there in Indian context. Yes, I would say rather it's around four to five centimeter thick. So it's around four to five centimeter thick region of the sediment. It's actually in normal condition. It it after laying down it will settle down on the sediment and by the compression four centimeter turns down to the uh, uh, three centimeter by the compression i think so two to three centimeter uh, sediment were very important uh, the second any idea about the level of metal these algae can uh, concentrate I uh, guess metal should be important in big body plant feeding. Yeah, uh, I would say rather uh, uh, in Indian context, the algae was preserved in the in the in a pure sandstone, which is quartz arenite. It's around ninety five percent quartz. So everything uh, regarding uh, uh, regarding organic. Uh, organically rich uh, any material which I don't think so left for any organic analysis uh, but yes for the metal uh, I would definitely go for uh, and just have a look for 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 any 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 anything uh, promising came out of context or not but I don't think so in sandstone it is possible but yes so definitely in the black shale and the limestone uh, we can more uh, go more easily to, you know, get all these uh, answers because uh, metals are a really good uh, behavior behave uh, uh, in, in in shale and uh, in, in limestone region. So thank you very much. Um, any more question? No. So, okay, so I will finish this presentation. And again, Dr. Pande, thank you very much for your presentation. And I will give you after, by email, a certificate, okay? Uh, this, uh, this PaleoBot video is a extension, a project, a extension project in, uh, of the uh, rural, Federal Rural University of Rio de Janeiro. So I will provide a good certificate for you. And thank you very much again. And uh, I will share your presentation and uh, everybody will see uh, in the future. It was my first live here in this channel. So I think problems with the time, okay? So okay. Uh, is it. Thank you very much. Do you want okay. to say anything? Ah, it's it's a really a great opportunity. Yes, uh, definitely. I really happy uh, to share my thoughts uh, to the people uh, from uh, uh, Brazil. I know uh, most of the people from Sao Paulo is working there, and Professor uh, Warren and uh, their team is also working there. And I must say that uh, there are lots of promising areas of Idiagaran and Cambrian sequences there in Brazil. I would love to come and uh, just uh, have a look and uh, collaborate some of the workers there in the Brazil and to, to you know just compare the global succession uh, in terms of uh, their idea current ecosystem. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the, my first interaction in Brazil. Oh, uh, Sarah, uh, and I'm happy. I'm quite happy. Thank you so much. Okay, and sorry for my terrible English, but it is improved. So, yeah, bye, Dr. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to all. Stay safe.